vSAN 7 Update 1 extends the capabilities of file services introduced in vSAN 7 with new protocol support, authentication, and scalability enhancements. Let's take a look. The vSAN File Service is another cluster-wide service that can be found under Configure vSAN File Services. Setup is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is enable the service and then provide some information for your domain, starting with the File Services domain. This is the unique namespace that's going to be used for network and security configuration, and then all of your other Active Directory information and credentials. Next, provide relative networking information, and then a list of static IP addresses that have reverse DNS. This is just a lab, so I'm only going to put in three static IP addresses, but it is recommended to put at least one IP address for every server contributing to the file services. vSAN 7 Update 1 will now support up to 32 hosts contributing to the processing of the file service in your cluster. Then review your configuration parameters and click Finish. Once you've got the service enabled, you'll notice on the left-hand side under ESX Agents, a bunch of vSAN file service nodes. These are the stateless containers on each host in my cluster that are supporting the file service. Keeping these stateless containers up to date is pretty straightforward. From the Services menu, just click Check Upgrade. You can either manually or automatically download the latest OVF that supports the file service. As you can see here, my OVF version is current, so I don't need to upgrade. Once you've got the service enabled, go ahead and click on File Shares. This is where you do most of the management for vSAN file services. As you can see here, I've already got a bunch of shares that I've created. Some of them are NFS, others are SMB. Currently, they're all using the default vSAN storage policy, although I could use other storage policies if I wanted to. It also shows the user quota. This shows the percentage of capacity for these file shares and to the right, the actual usage. The marketing share is nearing capacity, so I might have to fix that. To the left of each share name, you see this little card, this details card. This gives me more information about the share. Starting with basic information, like the share paths, if I want to copy them, the servers that are hosting the shares, and the hard and soft quotas. If I click on physical placement, I can actually see the components for each share and where they're placed. I can see the host, I can also see the cache disk and the capacity disk for each component. Then on the performance tab, I can actually see real-time performance metrics for throughput, latency, and IOPS. If I want to see more detailed information, I can click on View in Performance. Here I can see that same throughput, IOPS, and latency information, but I get a little bit more information. I can highlight a specific part of the graph to zoom in. I can also see file system performance information. And then in addition to real-time metrics, I can also do a historical query. I'm gonna see what's been happening for the last 10 hours. This is just one of the file shares. As you can see, I can monitor performance metrics for any of the file shares individually. All right, let's go ahead and create a share. I'm gonna go ahead and create a top secret folder share. I could do NFS, I can do 4.1 and NFS 3, but I'm going to go ahead and do SMB. I'll enable protocol encryption, and I could use the default storage policy, which is a RAID 1, or I could choose some of my other policies, RAID 5. I've got a RAID 1 policy here that I'm going to use. I'm going to define my share warning threshold. This is my soft quota. This is where I'll start to get warnings. Also a hard quota at 1 terabyte. After 1 terabyte, it'll no longer allow anyone to write to the share. I can also add labels. I'm gonna go ahead and add a label for top secret clearance. And click Finish. And then vSAN creates the file share. Now that I've created the share, I can go ahead and copy the MMC command. This will give me access to the NTFS folder permissions. But first I'm just gonna copy the path and access the folder. I'm gonna switch over into my Windows environment and paste this URL. And just to verify that I can write to the share, I'm gonna go ahead and create a file. So now that I've successfully created and accessed the vSAN file share, it's time to work on some NTFS folder permissions. I'm going to go back to vSAN and copy that MMC command and run this in my Windows environment. Here in the MMC, I can see I've got access to open files. And now I can see my file open. 
I can also see any active sessions. I have the ability to close that file and disconnect all files if needed. I'm going to go ahead and access the share permissions and grant one of my users permissions to that folder. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward NTFS folder permissions management. Going back to my file services control panel, I remember the marketing share was nearing capacity, so I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of that share. This, of course, is a non-disruptive operation. And now that file share is at 46% capacity. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to enable and configure the vSAN file service. It's also really simple to create and manage file shares, as well as monitor for health, capacity, and performance. vSAN file services, real today.